Hello everyone, welcome to the shop. It's been quite a while since I've made a video or uploaded really anything. Um, haven't had internet out here in the shop for a while. Uh, I used to go, should be bringing a ethernet cable out here soon. I was hoping much sooner, but things kind of didn't work out the way I was hoping. Today I'm going to take you guys along with me as I forge a few things this morning. I'm going to be making a small hammer out of this 52100 uh, bearing. I'll be putting this tree onto a forged base. I gotta forge the base. And I'm going to be building a new belt grinder. Let me show you my new grinder going to be a two-wheel design. Right now I'm going to be building the frame. This, this is a very basic idea. I'll be making the frame out of this chunk of steel here. I have a C-face motor, so that means face mount, four bolts with a flange, not a mounting base. There's no feet on it. So I'm going to be bending this into a C, forging a flat along here so I can attach the platen and forging a flat back here so that I can attach the pivot for the wheel which is going to be a pneumatic tire. It'll be a pretty stout grinder. I'll be replacing my old 2x72. The motor on it died. It's just kind of... this grinder was kind of garbage. The face of it held up really well. And that's AR400 steel face. But the rest of it is just kind of fiber cobbled together in just a few hours and while it served me quite well it needs a replacement if I'm going to be doing some more good work. I've been doing a lot of the forging on the press it's very lo fairly large work I still got to align the dies I took everything off to redo some stuff with the forge Everything here has kind of changed. I have oxyacetylene now. I have some more toys. This really nice table that I picked up at auction for 20 bucks. It does have this mica carpeting on it. I just covered it in steel and fire bricks. It's fine. Welded on a tool rack on the side. It's welded directly to it. I might weld some more on the other side or on the face. I got all my tools. I got to replace a lot of these things. And I'm going to be buying a lot of handles because I'm pretty rough on mine. I'm hoping to be doing more work here soon. Now that the press is actually running, it has new slides that are adjustable. The welding on here is atrocious, but I'll be redoing some of it. It's working quite well. So doing more of that. I made this finger and this butcher on the press in about a half hour. So it definitely does good work. Well I'm gonna get the forge started up and I guess I'll get to squeezing some stuff. I might also include the machining of that uh, base or of the frame or I might make it separate video. I don't know yet. We'll see.
the frame of the grinder has been forged. There's a fork and a flat. Pretty simple. I showed you guys a lot of the fork, not quite all of it. Didn't show you guys any of the flat. The flat's really simple. I just did that with a six pound hammer. So this is going to be where the motor mounts. This is a housing that it came off of because it's actually a pool uh, pump motor. So let's see, it fits pretty well. It's not, there's a four and a half inch ring on it that to seat into there and I was hoping to get this good enough that I could uh, bore it and use this as a ring to seat it but I'm not gonna I'm just gonna drill two holes here and here and machine this flat really I don't need for those um, for it to seat right there really that's for lining up the shaft for a pump like on that application or something like that what I really need is for everything to be in the same plane and because of that I'm going to machine this flat I'll machine this to the same all the way up to here in the same level as this and I'm also going to machine this back uh, flat here there's going to be an arm on the back that pivots that brings my wheel in and out for tensioning and so I can put new belts on and there's also going to be a tracking system for the wheel to make it move back and forth uh, for tracking so I'll show you guys the uh, machining here It'd be pretty dang simple I didn't get to the hammer but yeah that's all right that's the base I made for my little tree. I like that base. It's like a almost a star pattern with a bowl. There are four facets in it. I'll weld that up in a little bit. I did grind out some of the cold shots that I got from that hole that was in it. I think you guys saw that, but put this in the mill and get to work. My grinder frame is set up. It looks kind of like a shepherd's crook. It looks exactly like a shepherd's crook. It's set up in the mill with two clamps, and I'm going to kind of see how this goes. I might use this end mill. I might switch it out to my face mill, but there's no clamping over here. This side is uh, a little hard to clamp. I don't have any jack screws, so even if I put it in a vise, I couldn't really support it from the bottom. Um, pretty much anything I put on there is going to flex it upwards. However, with the positive uh, rake of the end mill, it should, with light cuts, it should only have a twisting force. Maybe a bit of upward force, but hopefully only twisting force, which this should be able to take quite well. It may push it down a bit, but I'm going to be very ginger with it, very gentle, and kind of get through this forward scale and to the nice shiny metal beneath.
Well, that's not going to work. You could see that it was uh, pushing down. I was hoping that, that wouldn't happen, but yeah. I am going to go find a way around this. Well, this is the solution I worked out. Just a bar a strap clamp to the table and a C clamp clamping up against the forging. Let's see if this works. Uh, I really hope it does. This guy's on the ground, or not on the ground, on the table. That so it has multiple points of contact with the table. And it does, it feels pretty dang solid. So, again, I'll be taking light cuts and we will see if this works. Machining wasn't actually too bad. Yeah, it wasn't super loud. It didn't flex a whole bunch Let's see if I can get Come on phone Yeah, it's blurry But it's not Horrible. It's not good um, Right here it dug in a little bit finish isn't super good that cutter isn't the freshest cutter on the planet um, yeah, I'm probably going to make the motor surface and the surface where the platen is going to attach to two different, uh, levels instead of everything being the exact same, in the exact same plane, just because I'm starting to cut pretty deep right there. I've put a chisel in right here and tapped it in just a little bit. Because obviously right here is a bit uh, lower than it should be. That'll also help to dampen some of the vibrations. I'm going to move that clamp and put in a different cutter that I have, my face mill. Which might give me a better finish. It's sharper and it uses pretty decent inserts. So, I'll show you guys all of that happening. That worked incredibly well. So I have these two surfaces machined. I was going to machine right here, but I think right here and right here, that's enough contact. It only have two bolts in it. I could have put a third in, but uh, I'm just going to go with two. Now I got a mill right here and mill the tail end. So. I was going to use this face mill originally, but it doesn't fit between the jaws of the clamp. So, yeah, that's just how it goes. Did a little bit of 3D milling right there, just trying to get this flat. I might take this, take some, well, take some sandpaper to this, and make it look nicer, but really it's not going to be open. Nobody's going to be able to see that. I'm not super proud of that, but eh, it's a grinder. It's not a. It's, it's a grinder for me too, so not rocket surgery.
Oh, forged a machine. This is the kind of light industrial forging I'd love to get into to do some more jobs like this, but paying jobs. Pretty happy with it. I'm going to take it and file it a bunch. Just knock down some of the high spots. I'm not I'm not a fan of the high spots. If this were a job I would have bought a brand new end mill. Probably carbide. But all I gotta do is drill these holes. I'm gonna weld on a mount for my tire. That's the tire down there that I'm going to use. And the rest is pretty simple. The center to center distance between a three inch drive wheel and the 10 inch idler is 25 inches. And that 25 inches is about here. So I am gonna cut off a chunk. This will get welded to a stand. The motor will be at the bottom, wheel on the top. This chunk here is going to be used for a platen, or to align, just align the platen, so that it is perfectly square with the motor and the drive wheel. The idler is going to get in a um, tracking knob, tracking plate, I suppose. So. Simple job, looks like a crook or a uh, uh, cane, but it's the frame for a new grinder. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching. If you liked the video, well, like it and subscribe. Um, hopefully I'll be posting more videos. I've admittedly been sort of lazy with it. Um, just been trying to set up my shop, but... And I'll hopefully be making more. I might make some more on the uh, for rest of completing this grinder. Right now I'm going to go wire wheel it and deburr it and do some other stuff to it. But I may make a video of how it all goes together. I'm definitely going to make a video whenever it's done. I haven't really seen anyone with a 2x72 grinder frame that was forged. Forging was a little rough, but it's a freaking grinder. It's not a production grinder either. So, see you next time.